Hello friends, welcome to the Tech Grant. Today we are going to solve the lead code problem split array into Fibonacci sequence. So this question has been asked in a very big tech company and uh, it has a trick involved. So let's go to the problem statement first. The problem statement says that uh, given a string s of digit such that uh, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 7, 9 we can split it into a Fibonacci like sequence like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 7, 9. What it means that when I add 1, 2, 3 to 4, 5, 6, it will give me 5, 7, 9. <coughs> so we need to, uh, whatever string that has been given to us, we need to split it into, uh, into, an, uh, into a list and that list should contain the sequence and it should be like Fibonacci. It should not be exactly Fibonacci series, like it should not be a part of the sequence. But the idea is that uh, the third number what we are getting should be the sum of the previous two numbers. So something like this. So if th this looks like a Fibonacci, proper Fibonacci sequence, so we have to split it into 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8 and 13. And uh, they have given a condition that uh, when splitting the string into pieces, each piece must not have extra leading zero, except if the piece is the number zero itself. So if there is any leading zero here, so we need to ignore that. So if we get something like this, then we will basically return an empty string because this is not valid. That is what the problem says here. And uh, one thing is that it can be split into something like this. So it should not be that uh, like we have in Fibonacci series. Uh, uh, that is an incremental. Uh, the series is in incremental order. So that's that is not uh, strictly correct here. Here, what they want is that uh, the number, the third number, should be sum of the last two number. <coughs> okay. So first time when you look at this particular problem, the idea that will come into mind will be your backtracking. That uh, of course, if I am given a number like this, I need to basically check for uh, a set of number like if I have to split it uh, here I will split it like this so I need to check for the first number I need to check for the second number and I need to check for the third number so what you will do is you will not split it straight away like this so you you will split it uh, based on the first two numbers so maybe the first split should be like this where you see that okay one and two sum of this is equals to three but when I got four so it does not match the sequence four does not match two and three now the the thing is uh, backtracking is you have to apply backtracking here but uh, uh, where we get confused or where we get stuck in this kind of problem is that uh, uh, we we face a challenge uh, in forming the number so we have to keep two things in mind first thing is that uh, <clears throat> whenever we uh, whenever we go through the loop or whenever we travel through this sequence so suppose this one is the low index and uh, when we start from this low index and we move towards right so we can capture these number individually but uh, we also have to keep in mind that uh, if this sequence does not work out, we have to take uh, the longer sequence. It means that if 1 and 2 does not work out, so suppose here it was not 3, here some other number was there, uh, 4 or 5, something else was there. So straight away you see that this sequence does not work out. For example, here we saw that this 2 plus 3 is not equal to 4. So in that particular scenario, what you have to do is you have to consider 1 and 2, then 1 and 2 and 3. So what we miss here generally is that how we will form the number. So to form the number, the formula is straightforward. It should be num into 10, whatever previous number that I had and plus whatever the character is there so care at uh, that position whatever position we are so this is a small trick which uh, which get missed during interview pressure or when you are uh, uh, in that environment uh, where you are giving an interview so let us look at the solution and this is the only thing that we need to keep in mind rest all will be straightforward and there is one more thing uh, since it says that uh, you have to ignore the leading zero, so we need to add a condition so that we can ignore the, if, if we get any leading zero, so we should ignore that. 
and uh, there is one more condition that we need to keep in mind but anyway we'll solve the problem first and as and when that error comes we'll discuss that that issue so in uh, we will do a backtracking here let us first form the result and the result will be this list we have new array list <clears throat> and we'll return the this result and uh, we need to backtrack so we'll say the method as backtrack and it will pass the string will pass the result and will pass the initial position so we'll start from 0th position so and uh, this should return a boolean because we need to check whether it is a Fibonacci or not so that is why the helper method or this backtrack method should return a boolean variable so we'll have backtrack here we have a string we have this list we'll say result and we have an index so this index will be the current index where we are now when we are doing a backtracking we need to uh, give an exit condition first so our exit condition is very straightforward here it should be if the length of string if this is equals to the position that we are at so if this is equals to this index in that particular case we will return now what we will return we will return true or we will return false now that will be based on our result so if in our result if we have more than two elements in our result then in that particular case we know that uh, we have at least three integer or three number in our uh, result set it means that we have a solution where we have broken down our uh, our string into a set of uh, fibonacci numbers so if there are more than three uh, more than two integer in our result set then we will return true otherwise we will return false so we'll say this dot size is greater than 2 this is what we will return so if the result size is greater than 2 it should return true from here otherwise it will return false from here next we need to form our number that we have so we'll just go through the for loop so this will start from the this will start from the index that we have got here and uh, this will go until the length of our string and this will be i plus plus <coughs> and uh, here we will form the number so this is the place where uh, uh, we get little puzzled and we get confused so we'll just form the number uh, initially we, when we started from one so our number was zero now next time if i am doing a recursion and i come here or as part of the loop I come here my number would have been initialized with uh, the value 1 so next time when I uh, am at character 2 it should be 1 into 10 plus 2 so it will make 12 so that is how my number will be formed so this will be as dot to carat the position I am and uh, since this is an integer and we are dealing with string here so just uh, we need to apply this operation where I say minus 0 so this will give me the int value of uh, that position so till here it's all good I think now we have our number next what we need to check is uh, uh, we, we need to check here is that whether we should add it as part of our result set or not so if our result uh, size if this is less than 2 it means that currently I don't have anything in my list or I have one number so in that case we'll add it as part of our result set otherwise the second condition why we will want to add this number as part of our result set is that it is a fibonacci sequence so how we will know that it is a fibonacci sequence we'll say result dot get the last number that i have so last number will be size minus one and uh, we'll add it to the second last number so this will be result dot size minus 2 so if these two sum is equal to my current number it means that it is 
a Fibonacci series or uh, whatever is the expected value that uh, the current number is sum of the last two numbers. So in these two scenario, I will add it as part of my list. So I will add it in my result list here. Uh, once we have added this number, we just need to go back and uh, do a recursive call and we need to check whether the remaining part of the string is able to form the uh, is able to form the Fibonacci sequence or not. So we will recurse from here. I will say back backtrack which will call this method again. So it will call this method with the string my result and I will go with whatever I so it will not be IND it will be the I value. So whatever I value I am at plus one. <coughs> if I get to, uh, if I get a uh, true from here from this backtrack it means that I have I was able to uh, get a Fibonacci sequence then I will return true from here from this uh, place also otherwise uh, if I am not returning true from here it means that uh, the set of number which I got as part of my list was not a correct sequence or it was not uh, forming Fibonacci series for example if you see this example itself so initially when I I was uh, at 1, 2 and 3 so it was forming a Fibonacci sequence till here but 4 was not forming a Fibonacci sequence. So I need to reconsider my step. I need to remove the last element. So I will say you remove <coughs> you remove the last element from this set. So that will be result dot size minus 1. Okay, so I will remove the last number from here and uh, uh, finally we need to handle one more case and that case was uh, this one. So this means that if my uh, i is equals to the position, it means that uh, I am at the very first character of my uh, very first character of my string that I am at and uh, s dot care this is not position so this is ind and uh, s dot care at my i if this is equals to 0 then i will return false and finally <coughs> i need to return false from here if i am able to reach at this particular point it means that i did not get anything which is uh, forming a fibonacci sequence Anytime I get a Fibonacci sequence, I should return true from here. So this looks like a, a decent solution. Let us try to submit it and see. Oops. Sorry. Okay, so this, this looks fine. Let us try to submit it. and it gave the wrong answer and the wrong answer was because of this string so let us look at this particular string what happened here and we'll look at the output also so for this string if you see we are getting some negative number and these negative numbers are because there is an overflow this string uh, this number that we are getting here is too big so that is why it is not able to uh, contain it as part of the int variable and uh, this should not be considered so for this big uh, for this big number the expected output here is null so it is not expecting us to give an answer for this big uh, number or which is out of the range for integer so what we can do here is we can just put a check here that if the num value is less than zero so we return false from here so let us test this condition so if I put it here and run the code so it should work fine this time it works fine let us submit it and it works perfectly and uh, the submission was accepted so that's the solution for this particular problem and that's it for this video do like share and subscribe and if you have any question or any doubt in the explanation do put it in the comment section i will definitely get back to you thanks for watching the video take care bye